Hello guys, this is Karthik from ExilAutomation.com and welcome to part 3 of our Understanding Mock video series. And in this part, we are going to talk about mock for return values. So before watching this part, I would request you to watch part 1 and 2 so that you can have a clear understanding in this part. Mock for return values. Using mock, we can set the return value for a function and we can then use the mock function to pass into any function of our application under test which expects the return value. So for that, I'm going to first flip to Visual Studio. So this time what I'm going to do to test the return value is I'm going to take our same PF employee class or PF details class and for that I'm going to call the PF employee PF details and you can see that it expects me to pass an IE employee personal details interface. So instead of passing the real concrete class, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a mock object for the employee personal detail. So for that, I'm going to create a mock EMP personal details is equal to new mock of IE employee personal details. All right. And then I'm going to pass our mock object right here. As you can see, I have this, I have created this as a arrange operation. And then what I'm going to do this time a little differently is I want to test the return value, meaning I'm going to set the return value of a method so that I can make sure that this method makes the functionality of that particular operation to happen or not. Let's say I'm going to test this. Let's say I want to set this get employee salary functionality as this method to return greater than 4000. Let's say maybe 5000. If I want to make sure that if it returns 5, if I set this to 5000, then it should return me true. If not, it should return me the false. So this is pretty simple example. So in order for that to be done, what I'm going to do is I want to ensure that this particular method is returning a value which is greater than 4000. So if I do that in a real object, something like this is eligible. And if I call a SPF eligible and I'm not going to care about what kind of value which I'm going to pass here. And let's say if I pass something like this and then if I assert that or maybe assert true is true and is eligible should be true something like that and this is our act operation and this is our assert operation so now if I try to run this you can see that it's going to fail as you can see the expected is true, but the return is false. Why is that happens? If you closely look at this particular line of code, this particular method, if we call the actual object, which is being passed for the employee personal details is going to be a fake object, but not the real object. That's what we have passed here, right? So even if that's been called, this particular value is always going to be a default value. The default value of any mock is going to be null and then it's going to return as the false. So it's going to fall under the false category. And now if I try to quickly run this or debug this, you can understand what I'm really telling about. You can see that the breakpoint has hit here. And if I do an FI and if I just hover to this employee personal details, you can see that it's a mock object. And you can see that it's coming from the castle.proxies. If I see what is the particular value, and if I do a quick watch, you can see that the value is zero. That's a default return value for this particular stuff. So if we don't set any return value, then the return value will always be the default value, which is nothing but zero in this case. So that's why our test is failing. So then what I am telling this time is I'm going to say that this method, the get employee salary 
is going to be greater than 4000. So I want to set up that particular value in my mock framework so that it will not throw me a default value all the time. In order for that to be done, I'm going to call a method called setup in our mock employee personal details object. Something like this. And here it accepts the expressions, link expressions. And I can say get employee salary. And I don't care about what is the integer in that case. And I'm going to say returns. And again, this takes a zero argument lambda expression. And I'm going to say I need a value of 5000. Something like this. So this is something which I'm telling that if I call this particular is employee PF detail and if there is any method with get employee salary, then its return value will be 5000. So if it is 5000, then the value will be true and our test will get passed. And now if I try to run this code, you can see that the test will get passed. So this is how you can make use of your return value in mock framework. So that's it guys. Thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day.